Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. My name is Luis Rosa, and I'm your host. Thank you all for tuning in. Today, I want to talk about some reflection that I've been doing in my personal life. And, you know, it all got triggered by an article that I read on Inc. by Bill Murphy Jr. He was talking about how Warren Buffett, the legendary investor, says that super successful people say no a lot, um, a lot more than successful people. You know, it, he was saying, basically, it's a differentiator. Uh, just that difference between being successful and being super successful. Uh, just how you separate yourself from that. Um, simply by saying no, you know, and this is actually something that I've been kind of contemplating. I just didn't know how to put it into words. You know, in my mind, I was like, um, you know, I'm being pulled from so many different directions, and you know, and a lot of you might be able to, um, you know, relate as you're just going through life, doing so many things. You feel like there's so many things coming at you, right? Um, a lot of opportunities. It could be right. Sometimes uh, it's hard to say no because something is uh, initially of benefit to you, and that could be financially or just an opportunity for you. But it might be taking you away from something else, right? And that and that's where my struggle came from. You know, I am uh, constantly being um, presented with things, you know, uh, and not necessarily something that it's an opportunity per se, you know, just things that require my time, you know. Now, the word no is often associated with negativity, right? We, we've all heard it growing up. I'm sure as kids, it's probably the word that we heard the most. No, no, you can't do that. No, we can't do this. Why not? Because I said so. So we have like a negative connotation to it. And if you're like me, you know, I, I'm what the, they call a people pleaser. It's even harder for me to say no. You know, uh, <laughs> so I own up to that. And that's something that I've had to learn as an adult. Now, again, no is associated with negativity. It, it could have uh, a negative impact on those that you're saying no to. You know, now one thing I realized, though, as I started thinking about this, I actually read the article um, on Inc. And then I read another article on Psychology Today, which I'll share in the notes that went even deeper as to the power of no. And it made me realize so many things about it that I no longer look at it as a negative thing. I was really like, wow, this is so powerful. You know, so... Let's uh, give you an example of that. You know, I was looking at no as like, all right, you know, this is going to come across as like, like, no, I don't care about you or no, I don't care about uh, whatever you're trying to accomplish. Right. But in reality, I was kind of like flipping it and saying, OK, it, whatever I say no to, it means I'm saying yes to something else. Right. And, and vice versa. So what is what I want to say yes to? So start with that. You know, what are your values? What are your goals? And it could be something as simple as you wanted to lose weight. You know, for those of you that listen to my podcast often, I usually use the weight loss a lot because a lot of people have have had that goal. Probably everybody has had that goal at some point or most people. Right. It, it's, or it's very common. Right. And I use that analogies as far as like uh, creating your wealth and things like that, because it's something that people can relate to, you know. So. When you say no to something, it's because you want to say yes to something else. Right. So I started thinking about that. So what is the thing that you want to say yes to? So you have to do some self-reflection there. What are your goals? And again, if this is hard for you. One thing that I learned too is having your goals in front of you. You know, I use a vision board. Uh, it's in my office. I can see it every day. It's 
written down. You know, it has goals on there, it has dates when I want to accomplish those goals by. And now what I'm doing is uh, because uh, my personality is hard to say no to because uh, I'm I'm a giver. You know, you know, people say, oh, people please or whatever. I, I call myself a giver. But because of that, it's very hard for me to say no. And sometimes then you end up spreading yourself way too thin because people can continue to come to you um, with requests which take your time, your concentration, and it also takes you away from the thing that you really want to say yes to. So having your goals in front of you, if saying no is hard for you, it's one of the things that's going to help you say no in the future. It's basically saying, okay, I got this request. Let me look at my goals. I mean, you could put your goals in a note in your phone. You could make a screensaver if you want to, (laughs) whatever helps. And then when you get those requests, you look at it and ask, is this going to help me achieve these things I have written down right here in front of me? Or is this going to take away? Now, I don't want you to think, because that's the other thing where sometimes it's like a, a fine line between coming across as selfish, right? When you say no, right? But so, which is why a lot of people struggle with saying no as well, because then it might come across as you being selfish and it's not well received. But think of it more as something that is, it's your fence. It's your your backbone. It is you taking control and you saying, I'm drawing this line in the sand right here. You are calling the shots. You are the boss. You are in control. You're making the decision. The buck stops with you. Now, that may not be well received at first, but over time, people will respect you. People will respect your time. And now, when you do say yes, it's going to have a lot more meaning because if you're always saying yes it loses its value you know when you say no now people are going to be like oh wow okay now you know there are different ways of saying no you can you can soften the blow you know if it's if it's very hard for you at first one way that you can start doing this is just by changing the language you know, and say, oh, you know, thank you. Thank you for that invitation. Unfortunately, I cannot make it because I have this other commitment and I don't want to let them down. You know, um, you can say you think about it. You know, if you don't want to say no right there and eventually do say no, but that could be one way to soften the blow. But it lets other people know that you are weighing factors, right? So imagine when you do say yes, how much more is going to be appreciated in the future because now people will be like, well, this person really values their time. So I better come at them with like a good request so that they could say yes. And then when they do say yes, it will be a lot more appreciated. You know, and that's one of the things that I've been learning. It's like you can't be everything to everybody. You have to draw the line in the sand somewhere. And there's so much power in coming to that realization. Like for me, it's been just a, a game changer and I just cannot wait to start implementing. You know, there's a lot of things that, I've said yes to just um, out of, you know, not want to, you know, just my own, probably me perceiving that somebody's going to take it negatively or, or just, I just want to help. Right. But, you know, ultimately you have to think about yourself, your goals. You know, I was thinking about the analogy of like, if somebody throws you in the pool, you can only uh, tread water for so long. Like at some point, if, if you're just coasting, you're going to give out, right? So you have to be actively pursuing something. In in the analogy of the pool, you're either going to swim or you're going to sink, right? You're going to swim to that ledge or you're going to sink. You you can only throw water for so long. So think about it this way. No is actually what defines you. You know, you're telling others who you are. It's about your choice. It's about your freedom. How did this country become independent? They said no to something, right? Uh, most countries that became independent, that they say no to some form of oppression because they were saying yes to freedom, right? So think about it in that content. Now, you're probably wondering what does all have to do with 
<laughs> wealth and personal finance has a lot to do with it. You know, and one thing to keep in mind is that you don't only say no to others, you also say no to yourself because that one is called self-discipline, right? When you say no to yourself, having your goals in place, you know, what are you saying yes to right now that you should be saying no to? You know, are you saying yes to certain things right now because they feel good? Because if you're saying yes to those things, then you're saying no to something in the future, you know, and it's a lot easier to do that, right? And, and that could be as simple as you're not contributing to your 401k. You're saying no to your financial success in the future because maybe you choose to do something else today with that money, right? And, and that could be influenced by many things. Um, so think about it that way. What are you saying yes to right now? You know, a lot of the, the forces are not coming from the outside. A lot of them are inside of you. You know, it could be instant gratification. You know, I've certainly been guilty of that, especially after a long, hard day at work. I want to do something that makes me feel good immediately. For some people that's shopping, for some people that's drinking, some people that's going out, whatever it is, think about it as you taking control. So there's a no to others. There's a no to you. No is there to protect you from being exploited as well. You know, again, time is money. You've heard that expression, right? Really, time really is. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's, it's even more valuable than money. That's another thing I've come to learn, that it's such a valuable commodity that you, that you own. So be very careful how you spend your time. You know, it's, it's not infinite, right? So why give it away? Value it. Guard it. And that might have to mean saying no, you know, and, and being firm and being <laughs> just decisive. You're taking control. Remember that no can give you the strength to change course. That's the other thing that I came across was like, wow, that is so powerful. If you want to change something in your life, if it's living paycheck to paycheck or if it's paying off debt, or if it's just saving for your future, for your future retirement or saving for a goal, you really have to start saying no to things, right? Because you're saying yes to that really one thing that you truly care about, which is why I go back to saying, have those goals in front of you. You know, is it retirement? Is it your dream home? Is it your dream vacation? Whatever it is, have that goal in front of you because there are things that are going to come across your plate or your desk that will deter you from that goal. And it might be very hard for you to say that no. So don't think you're being selfish. You know, obviously there are times, you know, we're not saying no for the sake of being in opposition. We're saying no because we're saying yes to something else. So we have to guard our time. We have to guard our minds. You know, what are you feeding your mind when you first wake up? Do you immediately go for your phone and start looking at social media or the news icon? That's that's uh, the one I've been guilty of, uh, getting consumed with news. You know, <laughs> now you know I I don't look at my phone in terms of how I used to in the morning. It's like all right, I look at it. Nobody's dead, right? There's no emergency missed call, text. Fine, you know the world's not falling apart. Let me go focus on what I need to do. Let me get this workout in first. You know, uh, if something's important enough, I'll know about it, you know, from the context of the news, right? So you have to guard your mind. You have to guard your feelings too, right? And guard your time. You know, and again, if you're a giver, I know that this is super hard for you to do. So one of the things that you can do is learn how to soften that blow. Man, start practicing with small stuff, you know, and... um Maybe you can do it where, like, uh, I'm a member of Toastmasters. For those of you, it's, uh, it's an organization that, if you're not familiar with it, uh, they're they're known for helping people learn about public speaking and also leadership. And they have this method called the sandwich method. When you are evaluating somebody else's speech or you're getting evaluated, you might get evaluated with that method. And all that means is kind of like the Oreo cookie, where you get like the something outside 
on both sides and then something in the middle, right? And and the way that works is in the in the context of you being evaluated for speech, they basically will say something that you did very well, followed by some constructive criticism, and then end it with something that you did well again, right? Because then it helps you like absorb that no a lot easier because it was said in between two nice things, you know, so you can practice your no's that way. You know, <laughs> just basically, you know, thank you so much for the invitation to that barbecue this weekend. I really appreciate it. Unfortunately, I have to go do this with my mom, you know, but I'm really going to miss it, you know, especially your cornbread, you know, uh, whatever, you know. And again, that that might be like uh, my analogy going back to trying to lose weight and, and not being around barbecues in the summer. Right. It's a funny one, but you you get what I'm trying to say. You know, it's it's basically get get to that no you know whether you want to soften the language or not you know it's up to you based on your character you know but just realize that it's your perimeter that you're setting your boundaries you're going to feel better by yourself as well you know so bringing this back to personal finances is think about the things that you're currently doing right now that are basically saying no to the achievement of what really is important to you, you know, and that's up for you to decide, you know, where's your money going right now um, that is deterring you from reaching your goals in the future. You know, I, uh, you know, I work with a lot of clients and so I see a lot of different scenarios, you know, and one thing that I've noticed in general, you might've heard me mention this before, is that nature fills a void, you know, it, it, and basically, you have to replace your bad habits with good ones in order for you to be successful. You know, so if you were spending too much money eating out, then you have to reroute that money somewhere else, you know, and, and make it something that is uh, structured, you know, so you can say, you know what, I, I just looked at my credit card statements and I spent X eating out last month. Maybe I can cut that in half, you know, but then if you do take that half and actually make it an automatic deduction going into your savings or your investment account or your 401k, whatever it is, you know? Um, another thing I've noticed too is that people tend to increase their lifestyle to match their new income. You know, I've seen people just earn more and more and more throughout the years and they're not saving more and more and more they just up their lifestyle to match that new income. And that's what I meant by nature, filling a void. It's, all right, well, now I could afford the bigger SUV and, and the nicer house, you know, and still live paycheck to paycheck and not save money, right? Um, and, and I'm not saying that to make anybody feel bad. I'm just saying we're human and that's very easy to happen because we just do what we need to do sometimes to just feel good about ourselves in the moment and unfortunately forgetting about our future selves. And forgetting about the sacrifices that we should really be making to achieve what truly is important. So one thing I learned then, if you think about it, choice, uh, you know, the choice for you to say no is actually giving you freedom. You know, it's, it's not restrictive because once you realize if I say no to something, it's because I'm saying yes to something else. So don't think about it in terms of restrictions. Think about it in terms of freedom. Think about your guarding your biggest asset. And that's your time, your mind, you know, um, just how you feel about yourself. You know, there, there's so many things out there that you say yes to right now that are such time suckers that drain you mentally and emotionally. So be firm about those because you're going to truly excel when you start being more conscious about what you say no to because you're guarding what you're truly saying yes to you know and that's one of the things that that just kind of hit me i've been thinking about this for a while and and i realized you know th there's so many things right now that i just need to stop doing <laughs> and I, I wish i would have thought about this sooner but yeah, it's it's coming, you know, so you might end up seeing a ton of changes going forward uh, as you follow my journey. And I thank you for doing so as well. 
uh, just as a result of me coming to their realization. You know, so I want you to do the same. Don't feel bad because, yeah, you know, it might not be well received. Some people will not like it. Some people are going to be shocked, you know, especially if you're always saying yes. Put those goals in front of you and say, from now on, I'm going to say no to whatever is going to deter me from that particular goal, you know. And if you want to soften the blow and use nice, sweet language or the sandwich method to say no, by all means, do it. But but do it. And that's the key right there. So I hope you found this useful. For me, it was eye opening. It was powerful, powerful. And I'm glad I get to share it with you. Uh, I would love to hear what you're going to start saying no to going forward. You know, send me an email, uh, Luis at onmywaytowealth.com. I would love to hear what you're saying no to going forward. You know, let's hold each other accountable. <laughs> all right, so thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at Luis at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.